Now on to Pynchon's Entropy. Uh, this short story um, may have caused you a little bit of trouble, a little bit of grief, um, because you walk away going, what in the world is all this about? If you're smart, I hope you were, you looked up what entropy was. We'll talk about that in just a moment as well. Um, first, though, let me, before I forget, give you your three quiz questions. We have three quiz questions this time, three short stories, three quiz questions. Quiz question number one, what is D's new full name? What are all three of the names that she uh, has adopted, right? So D in um, everyday use. Uh, adopts a new name. It's three names, actually. What are all three of the names? What's the full name? Second question is, um, in No Name Woman, uh, where are the aunt and her, her baby found dead? She gives birth to the baby, and um, they are both found dead. Where specifically are they found dead? And then the third question is for the short story. Short story why do the sailors come to Meatball's apartment? Uh, you get some sailors um, who uh, decide to come and visit Meatball's apartment. He's having this uh, lease-breaking party. I don't know if it's something you ought to celebrate or not, breaking your lease, but maybe he is. Um, and um, they show up, and but there's a specific reason why they decided to come there. They don't actually know Meatball. Uh, they've just been told to come there. Why did they come? Um, so, okay. So let's talk a little bit about this short story, because it is a, a very, very deep short story. Pensions works are amazing and very deep and have been talked about a great deal. He's considered one of the most brilliant uh, writers of American literature of the 20th century, certainly. He is also, gosh, the reason so many people like him isn't just because of his literature, because he's such an unusual guy. He is very much a recluse. Now, there are people who know an awful lot more about Pynchon than I do and who've followed his life and career as best as possible, more so than I have. He's not really my top figure in, in my background, but everyone will tell you that the great mystery is, who is this guy? Where does he live? Very few, very few photographs exist of him. Most of them are from his youth. Uh, well, I think all of them are from his youth, high school, college. I think there's one from when he was in the Navy. And there are a lot of really weird, mysterious, suspicious things about his life um, that have disappeared, or a paper trail has disappeared. A lot of records don't exist. Uh, even there's a rumor that some records uh, burned up in a fire. Um, hmm. He's definitely reclusive. He's never, ever given an, an interview. He's never been on television. He's never been featured in, in, in some sort of audio, radio broadcast at all. No one knows what his voice sounds like. He, he's, he's 83 or will be this year. I don't know what his exact birth date is. 83 years old. He's really getting up there. Lives, we think, in New England. Um, he won't write people. He won't answer, for the most part, letters. He's answered one or two in his, in his entire lifetime. Anyway, um, just a really unusual character of a fellow and, um, Supposedly, he made a cameo appearance in a film not too long ago, um, but that's been unconfirmed. Um, anyway, this particular short story he wrote while he was a college student, which you have to say for a college student, this is pretty good. This is pretty, you know, especially when you probe down deep into it. So I began by saying, hopefully everybody looked up a little bit about entropy. Entropy is a physics concept, right? Um, and I'm not a physicist, so I'm just going to give you like this, the, the quick and dirty thumbnail sketch. It has to do with the second law of thermodynamics, and that is the entropy of the universe tends towards uh, a maximum. Okay, now what the heck does that mean? What it means is that energy spreads out to maximum dispersion. So here's a, here's a, a, a rough kind of analysis. So if you've got a, 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 a bucket of cold water, okay, and you've got a, um, a thimble, no, let's say a shot glass of warm, hot, let's make it hot, hot liquid water, the, the, and we'll color it brown, right? We'll color it brown. And you drop that thimble of hot brown water into that bucket, and let's say it's a see-through bucket, just for just for fun's sake. Okay, what will you see when you when when you do that? Well, you're you're going to see that 
the, the brown water eventually disperses throughout the bucket, correct? Um, because, and if you come back in an hour or so, the whole bucket will be very, very light brown, one would assume. But what's also interesting is that the energy, the heat, the hot water in the shot glass will also dissipate within the entire bucket correct? So that what will happen is all things being equal, all things being, you know, I'm assuming a controlled environment, very controlled environment here, then, then the, the, the warm water, the hot, will distribute throughout the bucket and the temperature overall in the bucket will go up slightly and that's because the heat of what was in the shot glass gets dispersed. Okay, so you get the idea of that? So in a nutshell, you know, this is like back at a back at a cereal box explanation here. What happens throughout the universe? It's a it's it's a tendency in the universe is that energy continues to disperse constantly throughout the universe, and it spreads out. And as it does so, it goes things go from order and compactness to dispersion and chaos, okay? So much so that a lot of physicists and real theoretical guys uh, argue for what they call the heat death of the universe. Eventually, over enough eons of time, things will spread and spread. You know, the idea that the universe is expanding, right? Okay, things will spread and spread and spread so that theoretically one day it'll spread out so far and things will disperse so widely that you'll have an end to that process, what they call heat death, right? Everything goes cold, everything goes still, everything is frozen, okay? Um, but until that time, of course, the tendency within the natural universe is towards spreading out dispersion uh, and so on. All right, so you get the idea there. I mean, it, it's just kind of, a, now as that process happens, when things go from concentrated and orderly to spread out, dissipated, scattered out, and chaotic, it leads to information disruption, communication problems, understanding things less. Things are less knowable. Things are less easy to communicate, okay? That's the basic idea there, okay? So the idea of entropy has been applied to communication theory. It's been applied to, because it's far, okay, when people get, when people are scattered all over the place, how hard is it for them to stay in touch? You get the idea, right? You, you understand what I'm saying? Um, and how hard is it to like count noses? We're all, you know, uh, uh, dealing that, dealing with that, with this COVID thing and, and quarantining and stuff. It's kind of hard to get everybody to get together, right? Because everybody's gone to the four winds, as they say. So anyway, if you understand the basics of that, you don't have to be a physicist. I'm not. But if you understand the basics of that, then you understand that the story is structured into two different places. There's the Callisto obeyed um, uh, apartment, and then there's Meatball's apartment. And Callisto and Obeyed um, are trying to create and have created for seven years this hermetically sealed, perfectly balanced environment where everything is temperature controlled and nothing changes okay now outside what they're noticing is uh, it's 37 degrees um, but inside it's warmer than that and they've got sort of this tropical jungle thing and of course they have birds and things and there's one little bird that he's nursing and keeping close to himself and he's trying to keep the little bird alive by holding it near himself to keep it warm. Keep that in mind. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. But on the other hand, in the other apartment, Meatball Mulligan has all these wild people over. They're partying. The party's going on forever and ever and ever. Who has like three, four day parties? I mean, really. But I mean, we, I don't know that we're supposed to be taking all this that terribly literally. Some of this is kind of fantastical. Okay. These characters are all over the top. So it's not, a, you know, something that draws on the tradition of realism, for example, for sure. But he's got these people coming in and out of the apartment. There's kind of this craziness. And think of the apartment as being the single room, right? It's not. It's several rooms. But think of it as... Uh, and people, if you've ever been to a party, and I know you have, um, 
People tend to go split up and go to different parts of the apartment or the different house during a party. You might hang out with two or three people over here, over there. There's like four or five other people over in the kitchen. People are making nachos in the bathroom. Someone's throwing up, probably. Um, in the bedroom, some people are making out. Stay out of there. Um, right? So it's really, it's it's a party, but it's several different like sub parties going on, right? And people kind of mix and mingle and you go from one group to the other group and to the other group. And so you as kind of like this, as a person are like a, a an atom or a particle kind of zinging around all over the place. Okay. And everybody else is too. So it's not like it's all the people are concentrated in around one table and having an orderly conversation. Instead, like entropy, people are dispersing and their energy is being sort of dispersed as they go around the party. Okay. And so new people are coming in and out and it's chaotic and all this kind of stuff. So the two apartments are supposed to be sort of polar opposites of one another. They're metaphors, if you want, for the choices that we have in life. Because as we get towards the end, we see um, that M Meatball has to make this choice, A or B. Do I decide to go into a closet and get away from all these people because they're driving me crazy? Well, I don't like being alone, and I don't want to live in, in isolation. And But I, at the same time, this party's getting out of control. If I don't do something soon, everything's just going to be chaotic, and you know, they're going to practically burn the house down, okay? Because people are just trampling in and out and all that, right? So he's got that choice that he needs to make. In some ways, that choice is kind of like being Callisto obeyed, where they have a controlled environment, he would have a closet. Do you see what's going on here? There's something, he's getting at something. He's getting at something. It's not just a story about a bunch of drunks and a couple of weirdos. It's a story about, you know, how much control we have over our environment, our life, and how we participate in the universe. Big, big questions, okay? Each of those choices of the two has advantages and disadvantages. And one of them may actually be impossible, the idea that you can isolate yourself and, and prevent entropy from happening, okay? You see little hints of this throughout in different ways. The bird and body heat situation, right? Um, later on, something happens, I'll talk to you about it in a moment, uh, where, uh, well, I'll tell you, you know, by, because you've read it, but um, when they break the window open, okay, what happens? 37 degree temperature outside, warmer to temperature inside, what's going to happen? Eventually, the heat in that place is going to dissipate outdoors. And it's not like it just goes nowhere, but ultimately, there's so much more outdoor air than there is indoor air. The heat of the indoor isn't really going to affect the outdoor temperature, but the outdoor temperature is certainly going to affect the indoor temperature, and eventually both are going to be 37 degrees, both inside and outside. It's not that the heat goes away. It just goes out there, and it's so widely dispersed, it makes no difference in the outdoor temperature, you see. And when that happens, the bird who has been receiving transfer body heat from Callisto now no longer is able to get that same amount of body heat and dies. So, even though Callisto thinks he's created an, in, a, an environment that has stopped entropy from happening, he hasn't. Because even in his self-contained environment, there's still entropy going on. It's between his body and the little bird's body. You see that transfer of heat? Now, this isn't about heat, and it's not about climate. It's about something more and you got to sort of try to wrap your hands around, your head around, uh, uh, maybe your hands too, around what he's getting at. Because there's some things that are going on here, some conversations that are happening about the inability to communicate effectively. So uh, one character says, you know, my wife left me because we had this argument about information, communication, and all this kind of stuff. And I just, she doesn't, she, you know, I, I we misunderstood each other, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a point being made about how, you know, the, 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 the natural processes of the universe tend to break down communication. It, that, it's, it's kind of a natural thing. Things erode, things corrode, things rust, right, out in nature. Well, the, the natural tendency of the universe is for people also to 
disperse and therefore not be able to understand each other very well. So an effort has to be made. You see, there's where we're going, I think. An effort has to be made to fight that tendency, knowing you can't defeat it, but if you want to have some order in your life, you have to do something. And the answer probably isn't trying to create some artificial environment. Meatball doesn't choose the closet, for example. Do you see what I'm saying? This is really deep stuff, I understand. But get where I'm going here. That what 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 is also being argued here when the little discussion about Madison Avenue and consumerism is brought up is the tendency for cultural sameness to proliferate within a culture. That the more time goes on, Everybody starts being the same, looking the same, thinking the same, talking the same, because, you know, differences get erased and dispersed. And we this this the, and, and there's a certain banality to that that is undesirable. I mean, everybody nobody wants to go to this to town after town after town on a road trip and every town looks the same. They all have the same McDonald's, they all have the same Starbucks. They all have the same Walmart, and you say, but they're, you know, everything's the same, right? And so, so this concept of entropy, which is a physics concept, is being used by college student Thomas Pynchon to say, you know, that tendency in the physical world kind of is metaphorical for th certain things in the social and cultural realm as well. We too, as a culture, are subject to entropy. We too, as a people, in our lives, we are just, just groups of people are, are subject to entropic tendencies of diffusion, dispersion, blending, sameness, all of that kind of thing. And the question that I think the short story asks is, what should our response to that be? We know we don't want it in many respects, and that it leads to problems, in one case with one character, divorce, um, and it leads to chaos, and we don't want chaos, but if that's the way the universe is trending, because it's built into the fundamental aspect of the universe as it is, then how do we fight it? The answer is you have to work hard to do that, and Mulligan decides to go ahead and do that bit by bit to try to restore some, but not all, order to his party, okay? Now, all right, oh, wow, that is a big thing, right? You thought, well, this is just a party about a weird couple and, 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 and you know, uh, this is just a story about a weird couple and a party going on upstairs. It's more than that because if you understand the concept of entropy and why he calls the short story entropy, you know that that's really fundamental to the story. And then you start thinking about, well, what, how is he using the concept of entr entropy to illustrate what kinds of things? Now, the last question I'm going to leave you with, and remember the quiz questions came earlier in the video, so go back and write them down and, and send them in, is... What does this short story have to do, or what does it have in common with modernism? Modernism is a much earlier movement. This was written in the late 50s to 1960, I think, came out in 60. Um, and so modernism was a good three decades prior to that. So I don't think I would call it modernism. You know, some people might call it postmodernism. Uh, depends on what your definition of that term is. But it has something in common with modernism, because remember what modernism did as a, as a movement? It, it wrestled with, arm wrestled with, how to make sense of the world and how to make sense of our experiences as living, breathing beings in the world. How do I bring meaning to my life? How do I take this set of what appears to be chaotic and disconnected experiences and make it make sense? You see? So I think he does share something with the tradition of modernism, but I don't think you could call it modernist because it's not exactly fantasy, but it certainly has fantastical elements. The characters are not what I would call realist characters. Some are, some aren't, but they're a little bit over the top. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. hope I kind of decoded a little bit of it. He's a fascinating writer. It's a real tough slog to read through some of his stuff, but it's worth it. All right. Don't forget to uh, send in your quiz questions and post the discussion post. I'm giving you until Friday at midnight to do that. Also, I have your second reader response and the final exam assignment and question bank up in Canvas. I'll send this all to you by email, all right? Thank you.